Welcome to the MG5. It's a workhorse. It's a range beast. It's the first electric estate car. Welcome to the Faster Project. <laughs> oh my goodness! Can I, please, can I drive? Nope. Please. Planet Earth is in trouble, and we need to transition to sustainable transport faster. So today, myself, Rick Bullemere, and leading battery chemist, Dr. Ewan McTurk, are checking out the all-electric MG5 EV. This is a 464 liter boot, 1,456 liters with the rear seats down. Battery, 61.1 kilowatt hours total, just over 57 kilowatt hours usable. Range, according to EV database, is 210 miles or 336 kilometers per charge. Performance. A 115 kilowatt motor with 260 newton meters of torque gets this one and a half ton machine from 0 to 60 in a sprightly 7.7 seconds. Charging. There's a 6.6 .6 kilowatt onboard charger, but if you're out and about and you're in a hurry, you'll get up to 80 kilowatts on CCS. So straight away we have the reversing cam in the MG5. I've got to say, first impressions of this car, <laughs> it shifts. Oh. It definitely shifts. The, the acceleration on this is, is nuts. Uh, for, for what it is, you know, for a, a, a budget car in a way, certainly a budget EV. And um, you can tell that it is a budget EV in comparison to the likes of the Hyundai Ioniq 5 and the Kia EV6, which take build quality to, well, one of the highest levels mm. imaginable, you know, for a mass-produced car. The materials in this are just a bit cheaper, and the, the styling of it, the, the front grille, quite fittingly for uh, the brand MG, looks as if it's out of a 1990s Rover catalogue, but it's not aged disgracefully. It's an inoffensive design. There is a revised front end coming soon that looks a lot more modern. I actually don't mind the, the, the front grille on, on this one. And then, yeah, you, you kind of look at the the infotainment system. The sat-nav was very slow to load when I was playing about with it earlier, which is probably going to be quite frustrating. But you've got Android Auto, you've got Apple CarPlay, you've got your DAB digital radio and so on. You know, you've got, got quite a lot of creature comforts here. We're in the uh, excite, or sorry, the exclusive spec, which is the, the upper end. Um, this one has heated front seats in it as well. Um, and you know, for what it is, you've got quite a lot of decent creature comforts, most of which are, if they're not immediately visible on the touchscreen, are one tactile clicky button away. Really easy to, to use this. Yeah, I'm quite impressed by the interior of this compared to the exterior. Nothing, not much to look at from the outside, but they've done well on, on, the, on the inside. One thing that we need to talk about, the elephant in the room, or the lack of an elephant in the room, most electric vehicles have a front or a fruit, zero storage space in the front of this car. Very true, yeah. It's just one gigantic plastic cover that's hiding all of the electricals from view. But, as I said, the boot in this, being an estate, is pretty large by SUV standards, let alone car standards. So, you know, there's, there's still a, a hugely practical amount of storage space in this. And that is actually why this vehicle is being used as a workhorse by taxi drivers. So obviously taxi drivers want something that's going to be able to do the job, has plenty of cargo space, is reliable, isn't going to fail on them, is cheap to run and maintain. The MG5 clearly ticks all those boxes. And in fact, when we were doing a spot of filming yesterday, there was an MG5 taxi turned up at the Rapid Charger at the Arnold Clark Innovation Centre. So these are in use as taxis today. This is the the Prius of the future, because obviously everyone went for Priuses before because they were just, everyone thought, oh, these are going to be great, and they sold a bucket load of them. But this car, loads of storage, just hugely practical as well. Exactly, this is to EVs in the, you know, the taxi and private hire world 
what the Skoda Octavia was in the diesel side of things and the Prius was on the hybrid side. But this is going to, it's just going to be so much cheaper. The economy of it is fairly respectable. You'll probably get just shy of four miles per kilowatt hour out of it. You know, it's, it's, it's going to be not extremely economical, but definitely not inefficient. Four is a pretty solid number to be going for. Yeah. Let's check out the turning circle. Here we go. Hard rock. Yeah. Hard rock, hard lock. Well, you know, it's, it's, I think it's about 11.4 metres, that turning circle off the top of my head, which um, means How that... How do you remember all these figures? I can't remember my phone number. All right, come on then, let's um, see what it can do from okay. 0 to 60. Actually, we're not allowed to do 60. Oh, no, there. no, definitely not. Let's do, do 0 to 30. 30. So we're currently doing 8. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there we go, that was 2 seconds to 30. That's yeah. really impressive for an estate car. Mm -hmm. And being a dad, I do love an estate car, and I, everyone loves a, an SUV now, but if if I could have, you know, an estate version of an electric car, it, would, it wouldn't be this. I'm gonna be brutally uh, honest. I wouldn't go for this, because it just looks a, a, bit, a bit like a taxi, really. Yeah, uh, there is a risk that, much like people who bought Skoda Octavia's, uh, that were used heavily as taxi or private hire cars, like in my adopted home city of Dundee. If you had an Octavia and you stopped at the traffic lights in the city centre on a Friday or Saturday night, drunk people would tap on the windows and be like, you take us back up the lock here, oh day. You know, so, <laughs> you know, th there is a risk that the MG5 being the go-to taxi now might suffer that same fate. But that said, it's a really practical car. And I'm, you know, I thought that maybe that kind of stigma would sway me a bit, but having driven this, yes, it's cheaper than the Ionic 5. Yes, it's cheaper than Tesla's or, or even the Nissan Leaf. And that, you know, that, that feels that way with the build quality and especially the loading time of the sat-nav, which is a bugbear. But do you know what? It drives really well. It feels as if it's not gonna fall apart. So it's the right kind of cheap, if that makes sense. And as I said, these are used extensively as taxis, but they've already been put through very grueling paces by Cleveland EV. Did you put my heated seat on? <laughs> I was wondering. <laughs> Turn them up arse here. James is a mobile mechanic with Cleveland EV Mobile. Cleveland EV Mobile got in a number of MG5s, converted them to vans. They ripped out the back seats, put in some kind of sliding tool trays that pull out from the boot. Mm -hmm. His MG5, has covered over 30,000 miles in about six and a half months. What? Nothing's gone wrong with it. The tires are in brilliant condition. The brakes look as if they've hardly been used at all because of regenerative braking, so you're not using the foot brake as much. It's just solid and it's saved them hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pounds a week. But that is the, the key point with electric vehicles. People do say, they're so expensive, I can't afford one. But you've got to look at the, 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 the big picture. The lack of maintenance needed on an electric car. You're very rarely replacing your brakes because of the regen. You're very rarely replacing anything to do with the engine because you've only got an electric motor. There's hardly anything needed to, to run that. So look at the big picture. And uh, I think once you've driven an EV, you'll suddenly realize how much more fun, uh, how much easier it is on maintenance, and just how straightforward it is to be an EV driver. Exactly, even when this car gets old and has done you know, well over 160,000 kilometers, 100,000 miles, the point where a petrol or a diesel car is starting to get silly things going wrong with it, the motor on this is gonna be fine, pretty much guaranteed. The battery is made by CATL, who I've mentioned before are the biggest cell manufacturers in the world, renowned for the quality of what they do. Massive Chinese manufacturer. Incidentally, their Sichuan Gigafactory has just been given net zero accreditation because they're using on-site renewables and, and obviously getting low carbon energy. So this is actually a surprisingly ethical car. Ethical, practical, not beautiful, but it's not all about beauty, is it? So I think that kind of wraps things up for, for this, this review. And if you have been watching, thank you for, for tuning in to the Faster Project. And I hope this is giving you guys a bit of an overview of, of the car that might suit you or your lifestyle or your business. And uh, thanks for, for tuning in and listening to me and Ewan talking about cars. This project has been supported through the European Union's Interreg 5A programme.